Hi y'all. Um, so I decided to make this video um, about a film, a PBS documentary called Slavery by Another Name. I watched it back in 2016 and it really moved me um, and I had to write an essay about it in re my response to it uh, for one of my classes. So I'm just going to read that because I think it really hits all the points here. Um, so this is what I posted um, on Facebook. Blacks commit more crimes. If they just behaved with respect, they wouldn't get shot. Donald Trump is gonna bring law and order back into America. As a sociology major with a, a focus in race and gender studies, hearing those statements is like nails on a, on a chalkboard. It's even more painful to have to explain why these beliefs are stemmed from racist ideas that society has taught us, has ingrained in us. Um, so after watching the PBS film in one of my classes at University of Texas, it was really heart-wrenching um, to discover this ugly part of American history laid out with dramatic reenactment about convict policing and the unfair punishment um, that was given to black Americans um, after slavery was abolished. So sadly, some of those issues it touched on are still pervasive today. The PBS documentary Slavery by Another Name did a great job drawing connection to the treatment of black people, especially men, after the, after the 13th Amendment was passed and how the events that took place have effects that have rippled out to today's society. The connections are really undeniable. A lot of these points were discussed in class, but I'd like to mention the bits that stuck with me and how they tie into Judith Sklar's book, American Citizenship, The Quest for Inclusion. It's logical that the white slave owners were not just going to easily give up their property and labor that they had financially invested in after Reconstruction, but it wasn't until watching this documentary that I learned the events that occurred during this transition. A major purpose of the social construct of race is to create a hierarchy between groups of people. When blacks were slaves, they were clearly treated less of persons than free white men. But once they were free and being paid for their labor, they were now on the same playing field in competition for work. Blacks were willing to do any work they could get and be paid very little in comparison to what their, the white men were requiring to be paid. In class, we compared this to immigrants today that are willing to get any work that they can and be paid much less than American citizens. This new competition is what ignited violent hate groups. And as the commenter stated in the film, while slaves were previously considered loyal and trustworthy, free black men all of a sudden became liars and cheats and criminals. Uh, this new mindset led to the rapid increase in, event, in, um, in arrests and convictions of black men and the sudden spike in black populations in prisons where they soon became the overwhelming majority. Seeing this overcriminalization of black men at such a higher rate in our heads, it, it seems like it must be inherent. While the 13th Amendment banned unlawful slavery, it allowed for slavery as a punishment for crimes. With the large amount of black prisoners, they now had a large unpaid labor force. Seeing this as a way to create a profit, the state began the practice of convict leasing. Instead of taking the cost of feeding and housing prisoners, big companies would pay the state for custody of the criminals to use them for their labor. And once again, blacks continued to be seen as an economic value that was valued very low. Um, now that there was money to be made of these inmates, there was even more an incentive to search and arrest black men and convict them on trumped up or fraudulent charges. The film mentioned that in some cases, the theft of $1 could mean five years of hard labor. The crimes did not fit the punishment and a black man would always get a higher punishment than a white man for the same crime. It sickens me how many years people's lives were stolen and how many children were left without fathers due to this criminal justice system. There was no such thing as a fair trial because in the rare event that um, someone could afford an attorney, the judges were often paid off um, by wealthy business owners so that they could maintain their, their workforce. So one personal account in the documentary recalled the time that a police officer had given his mother a speeding ticket when she was clearly not speeding. The speeding ticket would cost a month's salary, uh, another mechanism to keep blacks from getting ahead. While the young man wanted to stand up for his mother, she held him back from opening his mouth because she wanted to ensure that they were not assaulted or killed by the police officer. And this reflects the careful manner that African Americans are taught to approach and interact with armed police officers from a young age. These hefty court fines would, of course, accumulate, especially if you're being constantly pulled over just because of the color of your skin. If you're being paid close to nothing, it would be very hard to pay off these fines and still have money left for food and shelter, keeping blacks in constant debt 
allowed for peonage and, and further exploitation. The unpaid fines would likely lead to an arrest and the loss of your job, and after years of being treated like an animal, if you were lucky to be released alive, the chances of being able to find work would now be slim, um, now that you're labeled a convict. And without proof of a legitimate job, you could also uh, be arrested for vagrancy and then continuing the cycle. So that strongly resonates with the same kind of system that we have going on today with cash bail and overall the whole system. Another way the court system failed American African Americans was the complete disregard for lives taken, for black lives taken by white men. Please listen to this if you listen to anything. The first conviction of a white man killing a black man in the 20th century was in 1922 by John S. Williams, who killed over 11 men in a very, very cruel manner. There would not be another conviction for another 40 years in 1966. And uh, the number of people that will never receive justice in those 40 years is really unfathomable. And it's truly disturbing to me knowing that that was only about 50 years ago. So one of the main points of Judith Sklar's book is that to be considered a first-class citizen, you must legally be allowed to vote and be paid fairly for your work. One of our rights as citizens is the supposed protection from being discriminated and exploited in the workplace. Therefore, if you don't have citizenship, you don't have this protection. But having a criminal record deters you from a lot of job opportunities, especially prosperous and respectable work. Uh, this label given to you by a legal system that's supposed to protect is actually hindering its own citizens, and some disproportionately to others. Being labeled a felon today prevents you from participating in the democratic process, creating unequal representation between those that are more often convicted than those that aren't. Schlar equates the ability to make a comfortable living for your family to the American dream. And at the same time, black men were unfairly imprisoned and forced to work in disgusting conditions for white owned companies. The white working population was moving up in social class all this while. Um, thus the myth of meritocracy that if you work hard you'll be able to gain upward mobility this proves false because it does not take into account it does not take into consideration the certain social circumstances that are put into place with the purpose of holding certain groups back in order for others to get ahead one of the most powerful realizations of this film was that the railroads and the streets of this country were constructed at the cost of american lives that were inhumanely abused and had the American dream stolen from them, ripped out of their hands, in order for their abusers, their greedy abusers and their families to become generationally wealthy. The largely disproportionate arrest and conviction rates between black and white men continue today. And after watching this documentary, it really filled in a very important part of American history that's not typically acknowledged or talked about. So I would definitely, definitely encourage people to watch this eye-opening film that gives answers to why society views black men as inherently more criminal than their than their white counterparts. Again, it's on YouTube. It's called The Slavery by Another Name. And I hope that this video um, does a good job of summarizing that that film.